The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And guess what, folks? We got markets in higher territory. Surprise, surprise, putting this on a 15-minute chart. Here is your acceleration on Friday. Quite a day we got on Friday, right out of the opening bell, basically, right 8.30 a.m. We trade a bit higher, but check out that 10 a.m. bar from 31.26. You close out Friday action at about 31.80. We were just about 3200 on the S&P futures at about 7 a.m. Backing off a bit, still relatively strong action across the board. Green paint, Sherwin Williams out there with that green paint this morning, flirting with about 3200 on the S&Ps. And how about 11,000 in the NQs? We're right up to that level, 10,951. When you put this on a daily, folks, I mean, look at that. We're, we're not only clawed back all of the losses we had from COVID, we're now up 38 percent from that drop off folks that is a full retracement you just go from 6644 we're going to be flirting with 11,000 but even if you had bought things uh when we're talking about you know 9700 remarkable action folks when we're talking about 11,000 that we are flirting with on those numbers in terms of what else we have going on dow jones that's the daily i'm gonna pull this off for a bit as you can see before we jump away Really teetering right around, we'll zoom it in a bit, just from the fall off of COVID, right? You go down to a low of 18,086, climb to a high of 27,624. We're about 1,500 points below that level. And we just kind of been teetering around that 618 level in terms of clawing back. We'll see where the Dow ends up. Dow been a little bit weak. Russell been weak as well. Check out that chart of the Russell. We're up at about 1715, sitting at about 1432. Putting this on a shorter time frame to see the action this morning. There's your NQs charging higher. Friday's action on the NQs, we were down as low as 10,625. We just traded to 10,951. The Dow on Friday from 25,293, up almost 1,000 points to about 26,000, currently sitting 26,144. Jumping over to crude, quite a day for crude on Friday as well. We climbed to a high Friday afternoon of about $40.77, just above $40 right now at $40.03. Looking at the gold contract, gold up about $11 right now, $18.13, quite a week for gold last week, up to $18.29.80. You want some context on gold. Let's take this bad boy. I mean, look at this, right? We're talking about from a full decline to $14.52. On March 20th, even really the low back at about March 16th, but we've gone from 1450 and change, call it up to about 1829. And let's just take this off. Really, you look, I mean, talk about the acceleration just from June 5th, from 1671 to 1829, the price of gold, silver up 52 cents. Look at this action on silver. There's Friday's action, continuing that gain, 1959 silver hit and notes and bonds. Pretty muted action, a little bit of a pullback from where we were on Friday. Right now, you're seeing a yield of 0.658%, ticking up a bit. We got to 139.22 on Friday, quite a price tag, backing off a bit from those highs to 139.02. And for some context on those notes, we were up there at highs we hadn't seen going back. So this is a daily. You had to go back to March 9th, folks. The high that we just made on Friday, 139.22. I believe we're above everything. Yeah, 139.21 was the high from May 15th. 139.22 exactly was the high of April 21st. And to get that price tag, you got to go back all the way to March 9th, anywhere above there. But we're backing off a bit. But man, we've just been hovering around 139 to 139.15. The 10 year just kind of comfortable at maybe between about six tenths and seven tenths percent yielding. Remarkable to say that the 10 year yield might be comfortable at a range between six tenths and seven tenths percent. But that is where we find ourselves. All right, we got to jump to Tesla. 
it just don't stop, folks. God bless anybody who has ever shorted Tesla. You had one run if you were shorting Tesla from February 19th to March 17th. I guess you had a couple runs, right? Because you back this up. I mean, we had some losses that looked substantial last year when you went from 380 down to 176. Facebook, uh, excuse me, Facebook, Tesla, almost flirting with BK at the time. But I mean, look at this monthly. Look at look at the last four months. We just ran from 446. We're going to open $100 higher today, folks, at 1642. Uh, it just does not slop for, stop for Tesla. You see the acceleration on Friday. They're in the den talk about on Friday. I mean, G7 in there trading those options on Tesla. Uh, hey, one, one good thing about trading options on Tesla, defined risk. Because watch out, folks. I mean, just from Friday, you went from 1375 to 1655. Uh, if you were short at Friday morning, and I told you that you're going to have a $300 pop by the time the market opens on Monday, you probably wouldn't believe me. And rightfully so, because the run it's had up until Friday is staggering to think that Tesla could somehow accelerate it higher. But that's what happens, folks. You had stories coming out on the weekend. Now, maybe this is the mark of euphoria, right? You had stories coming out on the weekend that Elon Musk passing Warren Buffett. He's now number seven, I believe, wealthiest people in the world. Uh, doesn't mean he doesn't deserve it. This company going to sky high, but you see those things. But guess what? We just added another hundred dollars to the price of Tesla. Be careful in the open, folks. At some point, this stock will go down, but not yet. You got to jump to Amazon, the other high flyer. Before we jump around, we got a lot going on this week too. Bank earnings, big day of bank earnings tomorrow. Uh, we got our man Dave White in the den talking about it. But you got Delta starts it off, but in terms of tomorrow morning around 7 a.m. But you also get J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, uh, more earnings throughout the week, but Amazon higher again today. You're talking about 60, $60 higher, above 32 it closed at on the dot. Some context on where Amazon has been. Uh, folks, you're gonna open basically exactly at a 100% profit from where we were on March 16th. Now you've seen some companies have a rapid ascent, right? Zoom, DocuSign, some of the most uh, prominent that have had runs. But there was a lot of risk in those companies, small companies, not exactly super well funded. Who knows what's going to happen when you're pricing in growth of a very small company. A company like Amazon, of course it was going to be around. And to think as it traded down here, folks, huge buying opportunities. And even if you look at where we were from below 2000 at any point, right? From basically February 24th, you took until April 6th. It's just been a one-way rocket ship. And we're going to open literally exactly at 32.55. 32.52 would be a 100% profit from where this thing was trading at on March 17th. Remarkable action. We'll jump over to Zoom. Why not? Talk about remarkable action from $60. We're going to open at almost 280. DocuSign. Look at these stocks from 43 last year. You look at the COVID low of $60 and change, and we're going to open at about 211 today. And as we wrap up this first segment, we'll take a look at the VIX. This morning, we're going to open. A little bit muted, still, I mean, 27. We're at a 28 VIX, and the S&P's at 3,200. Not quite uh, not quite gelling in terms of the VIX should be pulling back, but the market knows. There's a lot of volatility in this stock. We'll jump back. We're going to talk about Pepsi earnings. Pepsi trading higher on their numbers to kick off earnings season, up about $4. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P sitting at about 20 points in the positive right now. NQ is positive by 93, right under that 11,000 mark. The Dow back above 26,000, up 170 points at 26,147. As I mentioned, Pepsi, uh, with their numbers already this morning, pulling back on drinks, snacks, everybody at home snacking, it seems. Pepsi looking to be about $3 right now in the positive. You're talking about a little bit more than 2% in the green. Pepsi revenue falling 3%, not bad, right, compared to what we have going on. You have net sales falling 3.1% during the second quarter. Excluding items, the company earned $1.32 a share. Pepsi reported falling organic sales in North America beverage unit, but Frito-Lay and Quaker Oats both saw organic revenue growth. Getting into the numbers, revenue 15.95 billion. The market was only looking for 15.38. They made a buck 32. The market was looking for a buck 25. They said the company spent nearly 400 million on costs related to the pandemic. You're talking about PPE for employees, excluding items. The company under $1.32, as we said, revenue $15.95 billion. So the North American beverage unit, beverage unit, saw its organic revenue fall 7% despite growth at supermarkets and dollar stores. Interesting that people aren't buying as much soda at a time when you're definitely shopping at stores. I don't know if that, how does that play into things in terms of are they selling as much Pepsi at restaurants and so forth? There you go, closure of restaurants, movie theaters, sports stadiums weighed on the business, but not all of its drinks suffered. Pepsi Zero Sugar and Bubbly saw double digit revenue growth. You know what? I didn't know that Bubbly was owned by Pepsi. I should. We got a lot of Bubbly in my household right now. Check it out. I think it's like, those are like carbonated, almost calorie free beverages. It's either zero or five calories per. Check it out. That's just, uh, it's good stuff. Quaker Oats, North America reported organic revenue growth of 23% as consumers bought more oatmeal for breakfast and baking. Uh, consumers continued to buy these items even as economies open back up. Trends are changing, folks, and they're not all gonna go back to normal. Frito-Lay North America saw organic sales growth of 6%. So Pepsi trading higher on those numbers. We've got a bid ask right at around 138 this morning. Jumping around to what else we have going on. So this putting a little bit of a bid in the market as well. You got Pfizer, BioNTech, coronavirus vaccine, FDA giving them fast track status. Both of those shares are trading higher uh, this morning. Two experimental coronavirus vaccines jointly developed 
by BioNTech and Pfizer received fast track designation from the US drug regulator, the company said today. So you got two candidates are the most advanced of at least four vaccines being assessed by the companies. Uh, so let's jump over, you got Pfizer, PFE. We were at 33 last week, but check out that pop up about a dollar from 33.80 and BioNTech, what are the BNTX, I think they are, BNTX they are, BNTX, they're trading higher as well this morning from 70 to 79 back to about 76.76 as uh, the world waits for some good news on a vaccine, but it's gonna take some time folks. In terms of news, how about analog devices buying Maxim integrated all stock deal 21 billion dollars. So analog devices, ADI is their symbol. There's the action on that news up to 128 down to 123.50 looking to open negative on that action. And as you may expect, the company getting purchased MXIM Maxim up to 77, 73.97. Let's see if we can see where uh, where are they going to get purchased at? There you go, 78.43. So you see the market up to 77, a little bit of, little bit of uh, uncertainty there as you're back down to 74. If they think this deal is gonna go through, you're getting almost 78.50. That'd be a 22% premium, $21 billion. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, speaking of bad, numbers over the weekend, stark, stark numbers, folks, especially we're in Florida. You're dealing with now 15,000 plus cases. Uh, remarkable when this hit the, the tape, 15,299 confirmed cases, highest single day total for any state period since the pandemic began. Uh, we're now dealing with 270,000 cases almost in Florida. Death toll 45 more, bringing it to 4346. You're supposed to have the Republican National Convention in Jacksonville next month. President pushing for schools to open. Disney opened this past weekend. We have Disney trading higher this morning as well. Um, remarkable action, and hopefully it stays, uh, it, it, it not stays. Hopefully we're able to do something, folks. I stutter on my words. Because it's stark, you know, when there are four or 5,000 cases in the state, you said to yourself, be careful, you know, be aware of this thing and you'll probably be all right. We start seeing 15, 20,000 cases. Uh, that is not the consensus in this state. Now, there were a, a, a landslide of cases, nearly 143,000 people were tested Saturday in Florida. The percentage did come down to 11.25% of the results coming back positive, the lowest rate of the positive test result since the end of June, as more people receive tests. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of variance in these numbers, folks, okay, which is why the averages are so important. Just on Wednesday, we had a number that was 18.35%. We have 11% more tests, which you, want, you like to see because you want to find everybody so you can tell them they have the virus if they do so they can stop spreading it. Uh, but still stark numbers when you're dealing with over 15,000 cases. Uh, and what else do we have? Where were we? Because I saw, yeah, let's let's jump back to stocks making moves. It's just, I mean, we're dealing with the country, 60,000 cases for three consecutive days. That was the headline I was looking for. Remarkable, but S&P is at 3,200 and why not? We'll jump to Disney because we just talked to them. Disney, I'm a super long-term bull in Disney. I got an exciting announcement, another thing coming on at 10 o'clock. I got a new service coming out, check it out. We're gonna be talking about it during the 10 o'clock show. Uh, I got a letter coming out today. Talk about Disney in there. Um, you have out there even today that we get, I believe Disney got, uh, yeah, there it is. So Goldman Sachs initiating coverage of Disney with a buy rating saying the street consensus underestimates the profitability of the company's Disney Plus streaming service. This is what I've been saying all along. It's, it's a common sense play, folks in terms of seeing where Disney's been, okay? Here's the fall off. We made it back up to about a 618. We were as high as 153.41. I've done this fundamental analysis a few times. I'm gonna look at it more in the report that I put out today for subscribers. We'll be launching that program at 10 o'clock with Tom. Stay tuned for that. Um, but Disney, when you put this for some comparison of where we've been, okay, fundamentally, Here's your acceleration when Disney reveals to the world the pricing of Disney Plus, that they are gonna undercut Netflix, they're gonna bundle it with Hulu, they're gonna bundle it with ESPN. Uh, we're coming into earnings on Disney, and I believe they're coming in, let's see, Disney reports August 4th, okay? So we're gonna be coming in. They are gonna deliver staggering results for Disney Plus, I anticipate. I'm a subscriber, uh, subscriber to Disney Plus. Now, full disclosure, I own Disney, okay? but 
two, three, four, five years down the road, folks, they're gonna be competing with Netflix and they're gonna have content that Netflix can only dream of in terms of Star Wars, Marvel, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, um, kids programs that you never wanna quit. And so Disney, just to put it back, look at this acceleration, parks open. We've now climbed just over the last, since June 29th from 108, we're gonna open at 121 today. And look for this to creep up as we approach those earnings season, because I anticipate some strong numbers, parks are back open. And at some point, we're gonna return to some point of normalcy. And normalcy for Disney is gonna incorporate probably 100 million plus subscribers to their Disney Plus streaming service in the process. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps just sitting at 3,200 on the dot, waiting for that opening bell in 40 minutes. NQs up 100 on the dot at 10,937. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnn.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. As I said, big week of earnings for banks. So tomorrow, J.P. Morgan, 
Citigroup, Wells Fargo, you get Delta in there as well. Wednesday, Bank of New York Mellon, PNC, US Bank Corp. We get United Health and Goldman Sachs, Alcoa as well. Thursday continues Bank of America, Charles Schwab, Morgan Stanley. We're gonna throw Johnson & Johnson, Domino's, Abbott Laboratories, Netflix. We'll jump into Netflix in the morning. You got JB Hunt, the trucking company out there. And then we continue, continue with the finance on Friday. Citizens, BlackRock, Ally, State Street. Should be an interesting week. Net Netflix, we just talked about Disney with their streaming numbers. Netflix, man, oh man, talk about a rocket ship, right? So this is a peak at the newsletter I'm gonna be coming out with today, folks. Check it out, we're gonna be launching it during the 10 o'clock show. Netflix, look at this acceleration on Netflix shares, right? And Netflix, guess what, folks? We're gonna open higher yet again today. Netflix up to 567 overnight. So here's your daily chart, doesn't incorporate the action overnight just yet. So Netflix, they added 15.8 million subscribers last quarter. They'll be looking to add 7.5 million this quarter. One of the interesting things to take a look at, so they got 183 million subscribers. They're out with their numbers on Thursday. So we'll be talking about this this week. Uh, 183 million subscribers who pay an average of about 1087. They get 100 million subscribers, more than 100 million outside of the US. They do not hedge against foreign currency risk. So that really factors in. So when the dollar appreciates, that's gonna hurt their overall revenue because they're taking in so much money in non-dollar denominated currencies. But since the last report, the dollar has depreciated against other major currencies. So that should provide a boost in total revenue. Netflix numbers on Thursday. Now keep in mind folks, when you see the Disney numbers, okay? Netflix is at 183. They've had quite a head start on Disney, but Disney is going to be right up there, folks. And like I said, there's nothing. Content is king. And there's no bigger king than Mickey Mouse out there. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man, Larry Pesamento, coming up live at 9 o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock, Tom. S&P's 3199 right now. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man, Larry Pesamento, coming up live next. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back.